All right, welcome to the core exam. We, we're going to show core strength. Let's go, write the number 80,080 ,080 in figures. So it's 80,000, which means there's 80 in the thousands, and 80 means there's nothing in the hundreds, and there's 80, oh, done. Write down the value of the four in the number 643,000. Well, it's 40,000, right? So we're gonna write 40,000. That's its value. Find the value of the square root of 53 point. Well, grab a calculator, type square root 53.29 and have a look. And what does it say? It says 7.3. 7.3. We're powering. Let's move on. What's the next question? <clears throat> a football team has 16 players at training and they have color of shirts. Wow. Complete the frequency table. You may use the tally column to help you. I'm definitely using the tally column. Let's cross them off as we go. Blue, silver. See this green is perfect. Green, tally. Tally is so useful. Silver, silver, red. Who's got the red shirt? Another silver. Silver is popular. Green. Let's keep going. Red. We are powering along. Silver. Let's go to five. And silver. Another one. Blue. Not a lot of blue. Green, we're up to four. White, 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 white. Scores a tag. And blue, guess the last one. All right, so what we have to do now is turn those into frequencies. That just means how many are there. Frequency is the count. So we count them, five and one makes six, and one white shirt. Obviously, if it's a bit muddy and wet, it may not stay white for too long. How is that all we have to do? Didn't seem too hot. Complete the net of this cuboid on the one centimeter grid. One face has been drawn for you. Well, this looks like it's one, two, three, four, five by two. Five by two, I'm gonna say that it's that bottom face here. Let's say it's that one. Maybe it's the top face. I don't know, it could be either of them. Whichever one we decide to say it is, we just have to somehow draw a net. So connected to, well, let's actually, the top face maybe makes more sense. And, and make it to the bottom face. Uh, connected to this one on the back, there is that face which is five by four. So why don't we add with our ruler? I don't have a ruler, sorry. Yeah, I know. I can I can draw straight lines with the tool, but it takes so long. Uh, there's the five by four which is on the back of the thing, and why don't we put the little two sides? on here as well. That's going to be four by two. So we can hang them off here, four by two. That's a good job. And then we can say, well, under, underneath, we're at the bottom now. So we need to draw the bottom side. And then finally, we need to draw the front side, which is another four high. Can we fit it? One, two, three, four. Yes, we can. Good job. I think that's the easiest doesn't even fit on the page. That's the easiest uh, net given um, the situation that we were facing here. Okay, check, question done. Moving on, question five. Draw the lines of symmetry on this shape. All right, lines of symmetry, remember, they're like a mirror. And you can draw a line that one side looks exactly like the other, as if it was a mirror and we'd be good. So we've got these two horizontal and vertical. Uh, diagonals don't exist in this one because it's a rectangle. So I think we need to stop there. Let's keep moving. Question six, put one pair of brackets in, in each statement to make it correct. These can be a little tricky sometimes. All right, let's uh, work out what's going on. Well, if we don't have brackets, we do four divided by two, it turns into two. And then we've got 10 minus two is Eight plus 18 doesn't equal 21. All right, so what about uh, we do 10 minus four, which turns into six, and then divide by two, it turns into three plus 18 is 21. So if we put brackets around that, of course, we can't do the 10 minus four first, unless there's brackets around it. That makes six, and then we divide by two and we're good. Okay, moving into the second one, the multiplication has to be done first. So maybe we need brackets to disrupt that. Um, it makes like 
possible makes a lot of sense. We can disrupt it like this. Well, let's check what we've just done. Three plus one makes four, and four times seven is 28, and 28 plus two is 30, and so that actually worked out. Uh, we'll just take it, this one mark, right? Thank you for the mark. That's very helpful. Question seven, diagram shows an isosceles triangle. What is the value of X? Okay, well, we can draw on the diagram. It is our exam paper. We know that because it's isosceles, the other side is 34, uh, which means this, maybe we need to show some working because there's two marks here. So we're going to do this. We're going to do X plus 34 plus 34 is equal to 180. And so X is 180 minus 68, All right? 180 minus 68 is 1, 1, 2. And so that's what we're going to stick with. 1, turn. Oh, yeah. There we go. Fix it. 1, 1, 2 and degrees. Oh, we don't need to write the degrees. Let's go to question 8. It says simplify. Simplify probably means collect like terms. So let's collect 6 and the 2a. So it's 6 minus 2a. 4a and 3b minus 5b turns into negative 2b and I think I don't know how I can show much working out for that maybe it's like a, a mark for each part <clears throat> who knows and for part b we see s equals 5t plus a half a t squared. We're told that t equals something and a equals something. So where we see a t, we put 6. Where we see a a, we put 3. And yes, that is all we have to do. s is 5 times, instead of t, we write 6 plus a half times a. Well, a is 3. And t squared, well, t is 6. So t squared is 6 times 6, which is 36. All right, 5 sixes are? Yeah, 30. Still 30. Half of 36, maybe that's easy to do. Half of 36 is 18, and 3 times 18 is 54. 54 plus 30 is 84. Let's log that in and get marks. Oh, vectors. I don't even know if we have done vectors yet. But what you do for vectors, we add the two x values together. So 6 plus 4 is 10, and negative 3. Uh, plus negative 5 is negative 8, and that's it. All right, we should have written it over here, right? 10 and minus 8. When we're multiplying, you multiply the coefficient by every term in the vectors. So 6 threes are 18, and 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. So we'll have 18 and negative 12. Okay, question 9. Question 10, without a calculator, work out this. Well, they don't have the same denominator. We have to make them the same. And so how do we do this? Well, let me explain it to you just in case you're not sure. We're going to multiply this 9 by 6, because if we do, we can multiply that one by 9, and they're going to be the same. But we can't change the fractions, so we have to put, let's multiply it by multiply the top as well um, by 9. So that hasn't changed it because we're multiplying the whole fraction by 1. So we get 6 times 5 is 30. We get 6 9s are uh, 54. And over here we have 1 times 9 is just 9 over 6 9s are 54. So we have 30 minus 9 over 54. And what does that equal? That equals 21 over 54. Um, but it's, it does say simplest form. And we can divide those values by number. If you're not sure, grab a calculator. Uh, three sevens are 21, and three goes into 54. What does it go in? One, eight, 18. Seven on 18 is our answer that we are going to submit for question 10. Question 11, a four-face die is numbered one to four. Table shows probability of scoring each number do, 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 complete the table. Oh, so what we know about probabilities is you can only get one to four, and so that's all the probabilities, which means the probability should add up to one. So let's call this x and explain what we're doing. We're doing 0 0.17 plus x plus 0 0.28 plus 0 0.31 is equal to one. 
which <clears throat> we let's just grab a calculator. It's going to make life easier. 0.17 plus 0.28 plus 0.31 is 0.76. And so x is equal to 1 minus 0 0.76, which is what? Why am I using my calculator? 0 0.24. Hey, that's the answer. And do we have to put it anywhere? No, that's good. Oh, um, actually, we should write it better than that. Let's write it in the table, 0 0.24. That seems like a good place to put it. And we're showing some working out, so that's great. These are the first five terms of a sequence. Find the next two terms. Well, what are we doing here? Where well, we subtract one, and then we subtract three, and then we subtract five. Oh, let's let's say that minus one, minus three, minus five, and then we subtract seven. Oh, that's good because there's the pattern. Um, so the next two terms, let's subtract 9. If we minus 7, then we want to minus 9 next. And 11 minus 9 is 2. And then we want to subtract 11. And so uh, what are we going to do? 2 minus 11, negative 9. I'm just sticking with it. These are the first five terms of a different sequence. Find the nth term. All right, so we have to find some way of describing what's going on here. Uh, let's try it. You always try addition and subtraction first. We're going to say plus 7. Oh, it seems positive. Plus 7, plus 7, plus 7. All right, but we have to define that in some way. So what we can do, hopefully you remember a little bit about sequences. Um, the first term is 3. The difference is 7. And so any term is given by a plus n minus 1 times d. So in this case, it's 3 plus n minus 1 times 7. You know, if you expanded the brackets and collected like terms, you would end up with, uh, what would you end up with? Negative 4 plus 7n. But we don't need to even go that far. This is, oh no, that's how you get any term. Oh, this is the nth term. I'm just going to stick with this. Tn is 3 plus n minus 1 times 7. Or you could have negative 4 plus 7n. Either should should work for us. Daryl records the number of hours in a week. Eight people spent exercising. Find the median. The median is the middle number. The key always to finding the me middle number is to put everything in order. Uh, and we have some paper, so let's do it. 2 and 2. And oh, 1.5. How did how did I not see that? Okay, so it's 1.5, and then two, two, and then got to be more careful. Three, and then four, and then 4.5, and then five, and then 18. Okay, where's the middle number? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. Well, that means if we cut it in four, four, that's the middle right there, right? The middle number is halfway between three and four. Uh, so let's say it's three plus four divided by two, which is 3.5. Explain why the mean may not be a suitable average to use. Okay. Um, when you have an outlier, that's an outlier there, like 18, sorry, not the 4, just the 18, which is very different from everything else. All the other numbers are quite small, right, between 1, 1 and 5. And then you have 18 sitting out there by itself. Um, so how do we say that? Let's just say 18 is an out, L, is it Y, L-I-E-R, I'm sticking with. 18 is an outlier, so it influences the mean. But I think that's enough. Enough of a description. Should get us a mark. 14. Well, what are we going four. to do? It's just us. It's just checking. Can you use a calculator? So you have to be able to enter this into a calculator correctly, and then you'll get the results. And what you will get is a 3, 4, 5, 6. Well, the second one, we're going to get three quarters or 0 0.75. I think either will be fine. 
0 0.75. And for the third one, we would get one quarter, or you might be able to get away with 0 0.25. Question 15, Jenna buys 2.4 meters of ribbon and 4.8 meters of fabric. The total cost is something. Ribbons cost something per meter. Find the cost of one meter of fabric. All right, so 2.4 meters of ribbon and ribbon costs 0.85 per meter. So we have 2.4 times 0 0.85 equals something. So put it in your calculator and get an answer and write the answer. So we have $2.04. So that's all we paid for the ribbon. So we can find out what we paid for the fabric by taking the total cost three three four eight and subtracting what we pay for the ribbon 2.04 use your calculator and you get 31.44 we better write dollars okay well, how do we find the cost that's the the total cost for the fabric how do we find per meter cost well we bought 4.8 meters so let's take the total cost and divide it by all right i'll write the divide by sign might make you happier. Divide it by 4.8 because that's how much there is for all for the total 4.8 meters. So divide it by 4.8. We'll get how much for one meter. And one meter of fabric costs 6.55. And I think we're done. Ah, oh, we've got a place to write it. 6.55. Good job. Let's keep going. Question 16. Expand. Yeah. It doesn't mean that you should do X x plus a well technically that is expanding but no that's not what they want us to do what they want us to do is of course multiply the outside by every term on the inside and that gets x times x is x squared and x times a is a x so we have x squared plus 8x factorize completely we look at both terms and go what is in both well both of them have a three and both of them have an a and so we actually should take out the three and the A, and that will probably be where the two marks come from. Uh, if we take a three out from the first one, it leaves a two behind, because three times two is six, and the A is gone out the front. And for the second one, we took out the three and A, we're only left with the B, and so we should write that probably in the place they gave to us to write it. Solve the following question. We need to collect like terms. What does it mean? Anything with exactly the same variable is a like term. So we want to get the x. We want to rip it over to this side. We want the minus 6 to come over to this side. And yes, we can do that. We're going to get 5x minus x when we take it over. And we'll have 3 plus 6 when we take it over. 5x minus x is 4x. And 3 plus 6 is 9. And so x is... 9 divided by 4, because we're multiplying by 4, we take it over, we divide by 4. That is correct. Next page. 17, we have the universal set, that's what that funny little symbol means, is the set of all people in a group. What? Okay, that doesn't tell us a lot. Uh, B is the people who own a bicycle. Here they are, they're in that B circle. C is the people who own a car, they're in that circle. And there are 120 people in the group. All right, so the universal set has 120. What we know is that in the whole rectangle, there's 120 people. 21 people own a bicycle, uh, which means in the B circle, there's going to be 21. But we don't know where they go because there's two spots. So I don't know where those 21. 15 people own both a bicycle and a car. Well, we know where that goes because there's only one spot. 15 goes there. And 35 people do not own a bicycle and do not own a car. All right, so the only place where you don't own either thing is outside of the circle. So 35 has to be out there. All right, now we know the B circle has got 21 inside of it, and there's already 15. So we go, well, what adds to 15 to make 21? And we'd have to go, well, that would be six, sir. And so we know now that there's a six there. All right, that's making really good progress. All of the spaces in this diagram add up to 120, and 
there's only one space left. So let's add 6 plus 15 plus 35, and we get 56. And so the remaining space must be 120 minus 56, and that makes it 64. And there we go. We, we did complete that Venn diagram, and we completed it well. A person from the group is chosen at random. What's the probability that the person owns a car? Well, we want to say, well, how many people own a car? Uh -huh. And you might be tempted to say 64, but no, the car circle is is there. And so there's 64 plus 15 people who own a car, and 64 plus 15 is 79. So there are 79 people who own a car, but we're not asking for the number of people, we're asking for the probability. So it's going to be, oh, let's write 15 plus 64 which is equal to 79 out of something, right? Because probability is out of something. But what's the total number of people? 120. So it's 79 out of 120. 79 looks like it's a, a fairly uh, odd, fairly, um, I don't know. It's a number. It's got no factors, right? So it just can stay there, I, I think. We go to B. Shade the region D union E. Union means like an or. All of D and all of E, that's the union of the two things. We put them together, we take all of D, we take all of E, and we say shaded. Thank you for the mark. Go on to 18. 18, we've got, oh, a missing measurement here. The right angle triangle prism has a height of six, width of W length eight. That's on the diagram. The volume is something. What's the value of W? All right, to find the volume of a prism, any prism that's a that's like a right prism you do area of base this is the base why is it the base because it's the same all the way through so area of the base times the height in other words the volume of this is equal to uh, i'm going to write area of base times height but the base is a triangle so it's going to be a half of six of times w and then the height is 18 and we're told that the whole volume is 810. Okay, <clears throat> we can put together some things that we know. A half of six is three, and three times 18. We can put like all of those values together, right? And we get 54. So on one side, we have 54 Ws. On the other side, we have 810. So how do we work out W? Well, divide both sides by 54, and we'll get 810, divided by 54 is equal to 15. It's nice that it came out as a whole number. Is there a place to write it? There is, 15 centimeters. In a survey of 1,200 people, some many people are left-handed. Work out the expected number 11 million down with that many people. All right, um, so let's go for a ratio or a fraction. There's 150 people out of one two o o that's the fraction or a ratio of people and we're going to multiply that fraction or ratio by five six o o o and that seems like a great plan let's see how big it gets it's seven thousand on the dot we're going to take that all right Questions are on the next page. Well, that's good. 20, we've got some power here. Find the value of x. Okay, when you divide indices and the bases are the same, you subtract the powers, right? So this is going to be 5, 8 minus x is equal to 5 to the 2. Well, 5 to the something equals 5 to the something. Those two somethings must be the same. So 8 minus x must equal 2. 8 minus what is 2? Well, x is 6, right? 8 minus 6 is 2. We could work it out like that. The kind of trickier way to work it out is to say, I'm going to take the x over. <laughs> Why would I take the x over? Well, because life gets better if I do that. Uh, and then I'm going to take the 2 over and subtract it and get x is 8 minus 2. We didn't have to do all of that. We could have looked at that line and, and hopefully seen that it was 6. Simplify five to a power raised to another power. All right, so when you have a power raised to a power, you multiply them and three times five is 15. It's only one mark, so you only get the mark for the answer. 
And 21 says, ABC is a right angle triangle. Calculate BC. Hmm, BC. All right, this is that length here. I'm going to call it X so I don't have to write BC. Hopefully, we realize, oh, trig functions. And it's adjacent and hypotenuse. What trig function uses that? The cos of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. And so what does it mean? The cos of 42 is x over 18. So x is equal to 18 comes up and multiplies by the cos 42. Grab a calculator and type 18 times cos 42. Whoa, we get a, a number. 13.37660068. Uh, let's round to one decimal place. Yeah, I don't know if we should, but we should look at the front of the exam maybe to see if that's right thing to do. Hey, we're done. All right. Thank you very much.